SpaceX has been experiencing a very intense and challenging few weeks. As a result of their most recent static fire on B-7, SpaceX is having trouble with its launch vehicles and recently had to evaluate its orbital launch mount. In a recent tweet by Kevin Randolph, he stated, quote, Chris B. O. L. M. F. of the 11 engine, approximately 13 second static fire test. Not unexpected, but still gonna need a new coat of paint and such, end quote. Aside from all of that, how did the new concrete perform under the OLM? Well, even with testing fewer engines, it did rain concrete again. And to be honest, I'm beginning to worry if they can perform a full static fire test for 20 seconds or even a true full launch. Especially if they want quick reusability, SpaceX will probably have to use something other than concrete in the end. However, SpaceX is also experiencing issues with their workhorse rocket. SpaceX has postponed a Falcon 9 launch indefinitely after identifying apparent problems with the rocket less than a day before launch for the second time in less than two weeks. Japanese startup iSpace's misfortune also marks the eighth time in less than two months that SpaceX has delayed or aborted a Falcon 9 launch for unspecified technical reasons, less than 24 hours before liftoff. After a year of record-breaking execution, the delay streak is rare. With only a few last-minute technical hiccups, SpaceX has successfully conducted 60 orbital launches over that time. The sudden increase in last-day delays in Falcon 9 launch aborts in recent months may suggest that a single issue or change is at least partially to blame for the pattern. There have been eight delays in the past two months, with effects ranging from minutes to days or even weeks. The trend started in early October, has continued through the end of November. SpaceX's main justification for all but one of these delays was the necessity for additional time for data review or checkouts of the rocket, its payload, or both. It is easy to correlate SpaceX's statements that it was abandoning a launch attempt or was now seeking a later launch date with the company's consistent Twitter announcements of launch delays. After officially scheduled a launch for more than 18 months, from March 2021 to October 2022, SpaceX only reported three technical delays, two slight additional checkout delays and one last-minute abort. Between January 2020 and March 2021, SpaceX reported at least 15 other delays that were comparable to the oddity. A competent company should anticipate a decrease in the incidence of technical faults after some time operating a sophisticated new system, like a launch vehicle. That seems to be the pattern SpaceX was working with. A sharp decrease in technical launch aborts, even as the rate of Falcon 9 launches, accelerates to unprecedented levels. However, during the past few months, the number of technical delays has risen dramatically from almost zero to a level unheard of in recent SpaceX history. It's impossible to determine whether there is an invisible thread tying the most recent string of delays together without context. There are a variety of explanations that could be used, including concerns with the factory, management changes, policy changes, and worker exhaustion. It's even conceivable that the onset's seeming suddenness was brought on by a deliberate shift in risk attitude. For instance, improving sensitivity to off-nominal signals that were previously identified but were sufficiently discounted to prevent launch delays. SpaceX may have modified things too much or eliminated too many steps as part of its ongoing attempt to improve systems and procedures. It's also possible that the recent increase in delays is just a coincidence, although this is improbable. It will be challenging for SpaceX to expand its launch cadence further if the trend persists especially in light of Elon Musk's declared objective of 100 launches in 2023. Delays increased launch expenses and interfered with customer schedules, motivating a swift return to smoother operations. The most worrying development is the ongoing indefinite delay of a recent set of unrelated launches. After a Falcon 9 static fire test on November 17, SpaceX reportedly detected issues with Starlink 2-4, which was initially slated to launch on November 18. A new launch date has not yet been announced. After more testing of the launch vehicle and data analysis, SpaceX has postponed a second Falcon 9 flight, which was the Japanese company iSpace's first attempt at a moon landing indefinitely. In the end, launch delays are a necessary component of space travel, and it is preferable to keep a rocket on the ground whenever there is any doubt regarding its readiness for launch. Despite this, significant shifts in the frequency of delays are still interesting particularly given that SpaceX normally does not provide an explanation for non-NASA mission delays. In December, SpaceX has a number of more Falcon 9 launches confirmed. How exactly the lengthy delays of Starlink 2-4 
and Hakuto R will affect those prospective launches is yet unknown. For instance, Starlink 4-37's launch date, which was originally set for as early as December 6, from the same launch pad as Hakuto R, will move backwards every day that they are delayed. Hakuto R's Falcon 9 fairing looks to be recovered by a SpaceX ship test as it returns to port, implying a delay of at least two or three days. Let's switch to NASA's Artemis 1 in the meanwhile. What's the big deal with Artemis 1? So the Orion spacecraft is returning to Earth. The Space Launch System Moon Rocket, a 322-foot-tall or 98-meter behemoth that took a decade and more than $22 billion to create, made its first flight on November 16 from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Kennedy Space Center's ground infrastructure was being prepared for the SLS and Orion flights at the same time, costing an additional $5.4 billion. For now, the uncrewed Orion spacecraft successfully completed a lunar departure burn on Thursday, December 1st, to begin heading home after successful moon orbits. The burn began at 4.54 p.m. Eastern and lasted just under two minutes, according to NASA television commentator Shaniqua Vereen. Shaniqua Vereen said in a recent tweet, quote, Orion has had a successful and nominal 1 minute 45 second distant retrograde orbit departure burn. End quote. On NASA television's live feed, the solar panels of the spacecraft could be seen softly moving back and forth, while a small Earth shone in the distance. Now, Orion starts its 10-day journey home. And on December 11th, if all goes as planned, the capsule will splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. In preparation for the rescue operation that will signal the end of the Artemis 1 mission, NASA and the U.S. Navy have already started training. Artemis 1 has so far achieved its goals, according to NASA. On Wednesday, November 30, mission managers revealed that the SLS launch on November 16 demonstrated the vehicle functioned exactly as expected. Artemis mission manager Mike Serafin said something very significant. He stated, quote, The first launch of the Space Launch System rocket was simply eye-watering. While our mission with Orion is still underway, and we continue to learn over the course of our flight, the rocket systems performed as designed and as expected in every case. End quote. And so if all goes as planned, the next mission, Artemis, to will launch astronauts into orbit around the moon in 2024. NASA will then return astronauts to the moon no earlier than 2025 with Artemis 3. Hate to admit, this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's vid. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter, and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.